Hello and let's talk about Kashmir. Today marks the first anniversary of the day when the Indian state struck another blow on the people of Kashmir. Last year on this day, Article 370, which guaranteed a special status to the people of Jammu and Kashmir, was read down. The state was split into two union territories and all of this happened without the people being consulted. Political leaders were detained, thousands of more troops were rushed in and a harsh communications blockade was put in place. To this day, many of these restrictions continue. Over the past year, the centre has also started processes which may lead to demographic change, one of the dreams of the Hindutva Brigade. All this was done with the claim that it would bring Kashmir's people to the so-called mainstream. The truth is that the people of Kashmir have been under siege more than ever over the past year. The anger, sense of betrayal and pain is palpable in every interaction and every report. Today we bring you some voices from Kashmir who talk about what the past year has been like. A year has passed since the 70-year-old law was removed in Kashmir and the region was bifurcated into two union territories. Article 370 was considered to be central to Kashmir, a formerly princely state's accession to Indian Union in 1947, when a vast majority of Muslims joined the newly created Pakistan. The removal of Article 370 has been a rallying cry of the Hindu right-wing party BJP, so when it came to power for the second time in India, following the 2019 parliamentary elections, it laid its eyes on Kashmir, a prized territory in the Himalayas. To remove the law which was referred to as the tunnel between New Delhi and Srinagar, the government had to do something about the opposition in Kashmir. It did so by converting the entire region of Jammu and Kashmir into an open-air jail. All movement was restricted and communication lines were severed. On 5th August last year, without knowing what was about to happen, the people of Kashmir woke up in a severe clampdown. The government was about to make a big decision about the people of Kashmir, but none of them had any clue. As the decision was announced in New Delhi, a young 17-year-old boy, Oseb Altaf, was being murdered on the streets of Kashmir to maintain peace and calm. Kashmir was under siege, a strict lockdown was imposed. The media was not able to cover Oseb's death. Authorities later claimed Oseb was a protester. Government had not been protested. ये गोवा ये वहाँ का किन्हा ये कोरा मतलब सीआरपी और जेंड के पुलिस बरिंपुर थान कोरियास तिमसात जो स्थायित्व चाहे ऐसे चोर डीएसपी एसपी और ये करता हूँ भी मतलब आई लड़कन होता हूँ चाहे महल वाली मुहल चाहे या बारिया चीज़ ऐसे में दायित्व इंसान कि दबोक ये सब योगन वैसे तो किन्हें इम्स कोड़ गन दाब موسیقی रूसी पाक सांसद वैनिक दिव्या से कई आमत किस सजा है दुनिया के तेमिस प्रशिक्षु ये मिस मतलब जवान अवलाद गए नियम दुनिया ना कल गए ताबाल अमो मतलब आगो कश्मीर मान गए दो बात कर किया कहे ब्यागो कश्मीर ब्यार ही में सांन कोरो के मौजूदी मतलब बाई चस्से थे गर गान दा पता कर सु आप बस वो चलो खेलूं ना प मजार है किधर किधर गिरा कहाँ कहाँ लहो गिरा है जिस भी खाक पे कयामतें उठाएगा ये सुर्ख सुर्ख गर्म गर्म ताज़ा नौजवान लहो गवाह खुद जमाना है किताब पाक है दलील बराह हक बहे अगर न जाए राय गां लहो मैं आज इतना कहूँगा कि मैं आज लफ्ज़े कश्मीर इस्तेमाल करने से डरता हूँ क्योंकि जब कश्मीर कहीं नहीं है तो लफ्ज़ किस काम का रसवाई तो हमें 
अजल से ही मिली है जब से हमने जन्म लिया है तब से तो कश्मीर को रसवाही होते हुए देखा है कभी तो ऐसा नहीं देखा हमने कि नहीं भाई कुछ किया है कश्मीर के लिए किसी ने सारे लोग बस ऐसे ही हमारा दिल बहलाने के लिए सारी चीज़ें बोलते हैं बाकी कुछ भी नहीं Two days after the abrogation of Article 370, on 7th August 2019, Shabaz wrote a poem. Kalam khune dil me tu bo kar likhunga. Wo dam gut ke marna, hamari wo aahe. Wo sare janaze, wo lashon ke ambar. Me mauzu bana kar ye sab kuch likhunga. Me aawaz ban kar sabhu ki likhunga. Wo janu ka jisne bhi soda kiya hai, me un dushmanu ko jagane ki khater. मैं मुर्दा दिलों को उठाने की खातिर कलम खून दिल में डुबो कर लिखूंगा मैं सब कुछ लिखूंगा मैं सब कुछ लिखूंगा द पोइट्री ऑफ यंग मैन इन कश्मीर इज स्मियर्ड इन ब्लड वायलेंस एंड वॉर अ यंग पोएट फ्रॉम पुलवामा शाबाज राइट्स ऑफन ऑन दीज लाइंस ही फील्स कंपेल्ड टू राइट अबाउट पेन द लॉस एंड डेथ ड्यू टू द ऑनगोइंग सिचुएशन इन कश्मीर जिस चीज़ ने मुझे ये सब लिखने पे मजबूर किया वो था कि एक करीबी दोस्त था जिसने दम तोड़ दिया मेरे ऐसे यहाँ पे दम तोड़ दिया उसने एक एनकाउंटर में उसको गोली लगी थी तो फिर चंद घंटे वो जी पाया तो बस हाँ सिविलियन था वो छोटा था टेंथ क्लास में पर तब पढ़ रहा था वो तो वो था जिंदगी का एक एपिसोड जो मैं कभी नहीं भूल सकता पर्सनल लेवल पे मैं इतना कहूँगा कि मैं प्यो कलमस हट चढ़ गया एक किस्म तो क्योंकि हालात ही वैसे हैं देखें सच बात बोलेगा सच बात कोई बताएगा तो दूसरे दिन शायद वो ऐसा मैं कहूँगा कि सफ़ाई करदास पे उसका कहीं नाम नहीं होगा सफ़ाई हस्ती पर से उसका नाम मिट गया होगा तो अब इसमें कौन शामिल है कौन नहीं है मैं तो वो बात छेड़ना ही नहीं चाहूँगा ना तो मैं एज ए शायर ये बात कहूँगा कि हमारे लिए अगर हम शायरी लिखते हैं शायरी करते हैं तो हमारे लिए भी मोहाल है बागों में फूल सारे खिलने से रह गए हैं अरमान फसले गुल के मौजू में बह गए हैं लाशें निकल रही हैं वो देख हर मकान से अब तो लहू की बारिश होती है आसमां से अहले नजर ने लोगों जन्नत जिसे कहा है अहले नजर ने लोगो जन्नत जिसे कहा है अफसोस वो हमारा कश्मीर जल रहा है अफसोस वो हमारा कश्मीर जल रहा है द अगस्त 2019 लॉकडाउन प्लंज द स्टेट इनटू अ शार्प डाउनवर्ड स्पाइरल बाय द एंड ऑफ दिसंबर 2019 द इकॉनमी ऑफ द वैली वाज इन डायर स्ट्रेट्स द इकोनॉमिक लॉसेस रिपोर्टेड बाय ट्रेडर्स एंड राइट्स ग्रुप्स क्रॉस्ड ओवर 40000 करोड़ और 5.4 बिलियन डॉलर्स पाँच अगस्त ब्रोट पन जिंदगी ठीक पाठ गुजारान असल पाठ पन अल पकान पन गरिक बच पकन पन सोरे वन बिहन लस बस सोरे कहो अस निकात इस तक बनान या बिस्तर हवान तनान तल तो बनान मान स पन कम दो पन रोजगार मे पानस को नचो अस मान स मजबूर परेशान अस नसान कहन यो पांच दफा त्रे हत सत तुल पांच अगस्त पे वन अस तुल तो वन तुल तो वक् न तो तन आई सैनस घर मन सखत गरीबी तन अच्छे ने बेहि जेन वोल कह मान अच्छे तकलीफ अच्छन हूँ अस मान मत हथ कगर ये पांच अगस्त वो तन रूद मत हथ सह मत हथ क्या वो छ बिहत मान वो फाक तो हाँ लगे अस मज न वे कह बिल्कुल अस नश पान तह तकरीब वन बिफोर द लॉक डाउन ऑफ फिफ्थ अगस्त टू थाउजेंड The two brothers sustained their families on their own. Their lives have been deeply impacted since. Pakan, yani yath mein ya halat ke khara, pangas agastu pate gayi sa halat, 
یس اگه حالات وین اصلی شه او استی کیه سگو مکلان؟ اصلا کمانتی گارو خیسابی میکنن چالان. دوون چه اس فضلی خوره هست پیش پاکام میکس. اشی بیستار اسمو میکنن لار تر وان اشی باسان ایتی نار. اصلا چون نسواکی تن نگین میکن. اشی است کی بنامان یا بیستار ویس هوان تی کنان تی بنامان تی گوان کیا او اس وان تو ادی پانون میان تا توی پانون مانس. सास वास ने पाकान से हाथ सो रहे हाथ पानूं रोजगार रोज पाकान पान इन बाजू ऐसे क्या कान को है लिया अस्तु शुनो में क्या स्कीन तान पर आये इस टीम टीम मुश्किल आती हमने पुंगे वहीं तो इतनी शुष्क है कान क्या इसे वहीं तो फाग तिलागी ऐसे स्पान इन बराबर दिया चलान ब्लाइंड वैसे तो ऐसे नेस का सामोताज मुझे हकान अल्लाह ताला जीवन में जात मुझे हकान बारिया मुश्किलात गैसित ना आसन समझ शुमें बीते हकान खुद कशी ही था हालात तो गैसित क्या इसलिए ना मैं गारंट में उसकी हिम तो वास बच्चन में सोर्ट ऐसे समझ मॉल की हिम चुन ये तो बहुत हालात या है कि बच्चे क्या ना क्या फेल करे तो या है कि मॉल ही प मानसे मानसुन अमीर दे अगर मैं खुदा तो सहल कह रही। What compounded the situation for people in Kashmir was another lockdown imposed right when 5th August lockdown was beginning to ease. The outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic further pushed the people in the region towards the wall. In our next segment, we bring you a conversation with Professor Radha Kumar, who was an interlocutor for the government in Kashmir. She talks about the impact of the past year, especially in areas such as education and healthcare. First, I think, uh, finding was how a whole series of human rights, uh, from habeas corpus to the right to bail, to the right to a speedy trial, to uh, protections against uh, arbitrary arrest, uh, to the rights of children not to be arrested, uh, all of these were violated. Uh, uh, from August 4th onwards. Um, what we did find, uh, and there was very little recourse uh, uh, in the sense that the courts took a very, very long time uh, on any of these uh, petitions on habeas corpus or bail. Uh, and in that sense, one might say that uh, really, you can say that those rights were denied even by the courts. Uh, which is a sad situation. Um, we also found that uh, you have people in India perhaps don't realize that what we're talking about is in effect one year of lockdown in, in uh, what used to be a state uh, of the country. Uh, and obviously, if you have one year uh, of a lockdown, you are going to have terrible impacts on the economy, on health, and on education. Um, looking at industry, estimates that have come out of the valley, for example, from the Kashmir Chamber of Commerce and Industry, indicate that there could be a loss of as much as 40,000 crore across all sectors of the industry. Uh, obviously, the most severely affected were also those that contributed a very large uh, proportion of the GDP uh, of the state, the fruit industry, the tourism industry, services, uh, all of these were severely impacted. Smaller uh, industries like handicrafts or information technology, many, many companies, especially startups, were forced to go out of business. Um, <clears throat> In the March budget, we did not see any allocations for compensations for these losses. Uh, and these losses were not due to natural disasters, but due to man-made uh, disaster. Um, on health, uh, we saw interestingly that, uh, that, that the impact on health could be divided into two phases. The first phase being the first, say, two to three months uh, from August 4th to, let's say, October, uh, when, uh, you know, communications were snapped, when Section 144 was imposed, when no one could uh, go uh, to the hospital, uh, and when you could not speak to your doctor on the telephone. Uh, clinics were closed. Pharmacies could not uh, deliver medicines. 
uh, vital medicines did not arrive at pharmacies. Uh, already news reports have indicated that several people died in that period just for lack of access to healthcare. And that's really uh, very shocking. Um, the COVID uh, lockdown by contrast was uh, allowed some movement. People could go to hospitals, even though on average, it took three or four times the amount of time uh, to get to a hospital compared to pre-August uh, 2019. Um, but still, doctors had terrible difficulties. They could not keep up with the latest information and research on the pandemic and methods of dealing with it. Uh, nurses could not attend even government conferences uh, digitally uh, because of the restriction to 2G networks. Um, patients who spoke to their doctors uh, were not able to visually explain uh, what their ailment was. So across all categories, you saw uh, a, a negative, a severe negative impact on healthcare. Uh, <clears throat> education was one of the major sufferers. First, uh, post the lockdown, schools were closed. Uh, then when they were opened, it was very difficult for parents to send their children to school because they couldn't communicate with them on the phone, they couldn't check on them, uh, they couldn't communicate with the school, uh, and that was a risk that obviously most parents were not willing to take, as I would not be either. Um, when things began to improve slightly and some movement was allowed, uh, and at least some basic communication was possible. Uh, schools opened for perhaps two weeks, then there were winter vacations. Then came the COVID pandemic. And uh, um, uh, uh, again, the continuing restriction to 2G uh, at this point became really uh, uh, dire in terms of its impact on education because online classes could barely function. Uh, uh, most of the time they were snapped. Uh, you could not, you know, many students couldn't uh, even get online. Uh, and uh, this we found across the board in all parts of Jammu and Kashmir, this problem of 2G. And teachers as well as students were traumatized uh, by the inability, uh, for the students, the inability to learn uh, or to even see, you know, familiar, friendly faces. Uh, and for teachers, the inability to deliver uh, the kind of education that they uh, uh, wished to give uh, their students. I mean, teaching is a, like health, is a vocation. Still, it's not a money-making enterprise. Uh, so that, 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 I would say, was tragic. Uh, doctors have told us how the rates of trauma uh, have shot up. Uh, stress, trauma, distress, disability, inability to function, uh, the innumerable mental health problems from child to adult, uh, again, across the state. Um, now, looking at all of these, you ask yourself, uh, why? You know, what can be the possible justification for this? We hear uh, the Jammu and Kashmir administration, as well as the Union Home Ministry, saying that all of these steps were necessary in the name of security. Uh, that if these steps had not been taken, then figures for militancy would rise, figures <coughs> of terrorism, cross-border organization, and so on. Uh, would all rise. Uh, I would only say that they have not really shown any substantive or convincing uh, evidence. It is true that figures for casualties have dropped by about 30 percent uh, compared to the same one year uh, preceding year of August to you know 2018 to uh, June 2019. But that drop is not, uh, uh, in absolute numbers, it's not a very large drop. We're talking maybe a couple of hundred. 
So if you look deeper into the government figures, what you see is that actually incidents of violence were dropping continuously from 2002 onwards, uh, from a height of say, you know, 4,000 or 5,000 incidents. Uh, by 2013, you had come down to something like 150. Uh, slowly after 2014, those figures for violence started to rise slightly, but still very slightly compared to uh, the 90s or even the early 2000s. Uh, the only conclusion to be derived from those figures is actually that the impact of peace and dialogue processes during uh, the 2000s did impact in terms of bringing incidents of violence down. And there were two major factors. I mean, one was the dialogue uh, with all shades of political opinion, as the government put it, uh, in Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, uh, and the other was um, the fact that the uh, security forces had adopted a hearts and minds policy where they tried, for example, to restrict cordon and search operations to the bare minimum uh, and to ensure that, uh, you know, orders that uh, the Supreme Court had uh, um, supported the army chief to give in terms of respect for human rights, that those were strictly adhered to, to the extent possible. I mean, security forces never adhere strictly to all human rights norms. Um, <clears throat> so, so these two factors together had contributed a great deal to the rise of uh, some hope for a political solution uh, to this long-standing uh, issue of the relationship between Jammu and Kashmir and the rest of the Indian Union. Um, However, what we've seen uh, uh, from 2014 onwards, and certainly at a really accelerated uh, pace in this last one year, is that cordon and search operations, for example, have shot up in number. Every single day we saw for, from the beginning of June to date almost, we have had a cordon and search operation. Whichever way you cut it, that is inevitably going to lead not only to an increase in casualties, but uh, even more seriously to a real alienation of uh, the population. Uh, again, I would say any one of us can imagine what it would be like to have suddenly, uh, you know, a, a number of armed soldiers come surround our locality. Uh, start searching all the houses in some cases where there is strong evidence to show that militants may be hiding, laying IEDs. Uh, uh, it is a very terrifying experience. And it cannot be something that can become a norm. It has to be rare if you want actually to, to bring uh, peace. <laughs> Uh, uh, in an area. Yeah, definitely. That was um, an interesting part of the report. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back with more news from the country tomorrow. Until then, keep watching NewsClick.